So welcome everybody to this latest video on 160 Maths. In this video we'll be doing another GCSE revision topic test on the higher syllabus, this time focusing on statistical measures. Now there will be a copy of the question paper in the description below for you to download and have an attempt at before watching this video and going through the answers. So let's get started on this statistical measure higher topic test. So looking at question one, it says decide in each case whether you would use primary or secondary data to investigate these hypotheses. Now again, just an explanation of what some of these words mean. So primary is where you collect the data yourself. Secondary is where you get someone else to collect it for you or you look on the internet or use different resource to collect the data. And hypotheses is just an opinionated statement. So in this first one it says the coldest month of the year is December. So again for that what you would need to do is collect the data so you look at temperatures and that would therefore be secondary. And then for the reaction time of girls are better than the that of boys, well that's going to be primary because you'll obviously you would do the test yourself. For the next question it said circle the best way to show the following data. So the hours of sunshine in a town for a week. Now the correct answer for this one is going to be a bar chart. Now the reason for that is because scatter diagrams you draw that if you're looking to see if a relationship exists between two things. So you wouldn't really assume like look for a relationship to see if it's sunny on a particular day than and another in terms of what day it actually is. So like Mondays is more warmer than, or has more hours of sunshine than Tuesday, it's just not going to happen. Community frequency won't really apply because you're not dealing with uh, group data and also in terms of the sort of x-axis you're looking at days of the week so you're looking at sort of categorical data rather than numerical data and also histograms wouldn't really work either because again you're looking at in terms of um, quantitative data rather than qualitative data. So again, bar chart is going to be the option you go for. For the second question, it says the num the sales of umbrellas and the amount of rainfall. Now these are both going to be numbers, and so what we'd go for is the scatter diagram because again you see looking for a relationship between the sales of umbrellas and the amount of rainfall. Moving on to question three, it says here is a table of weekly wages in a small kitchen fitting company, and so we've got labourers, driver, forum, uh, foreman designers and owner it says work out the median weekly wage now for this what we need to do is now there's a couple of ways you can do this is you want to work out as there's 10 people in terms of their wages that's been recorded you want to look for the 5.5th uh, person another way of doing it for one mark although it may seem excessive is just write out all the amounts because there are 10 numbers to write out so I've got five 240s and one more and I've got one 300 I've got 340, two 500s, and one 1500. And I want to look for the median value. Now, the median value is going to be between these two numbers. So if I do 240 plus 300, which is 540, divide that by 2, and I get a median answer of 270. Then for question 3b, it says give a reason why the mean would not be a good measure for the average wage in the company. Well, the reason for that is because the owner's wage would skew the results so because it's a lot higher than the other sort of four positions in the company so something along those lines would be absolutely fine so in terms of what i'd write in the answer for again for one mark would be because the owner's uh, wage is much higher than everyone else's So would and what we call skew the results or the mean value. So something along those lines would be absolutely fine. So just highlighting the fact that the owner's wage is considerably or three times as much as anyone else's in the company. Moving on to question four, it says Roxy's class have a mathematics test next week. Uh, she has this hypothesis and it says that the more revision you do, the better you will do in the test. And the question says, how could she test her hypothesis? Now for this, uh, there can be several different answers, but what you want to do in terms of your for four marks is state something along the lines of this. So what you want to do is something along the lines of you collecting data and what data you're going to collect is you want to collect uh, the hours spent by students 
and their final mark. You then want to go on to then talk about what diagram you would use. So then you would then plot the results in a scatter diagram or scatter graph, whichever floats your boat in terms of its name. And then for the fourth one, the third, sorry, for the third one, you would say, well, what are you looking for? So what you're going to do is you're going to see if correlation exists. And so something along those lines to see just to check to see if there is correlation. And then your final mark would be is how to prove whether the hypothesis is true. So if there is positive correlation, then Roxy's hypothesis is true. So something along those lines would be absolutely fine. But whenever you're doing these types of questions, particularly at GCSE level, you want to talk about how you're going to collect the data and what data it is you're going to collect, um, what diagrams or how you're going to represent your data, so what diagram you're going to choose. And you may want to go on to the next sort of expand and say why you're going to use that diagram. Uh, how do you know what you're looking for in the diagram? So again, what's written in orange? And then finally, if the hypothesis is true, how do you know? So sum it along those lines to gain the four marks. Then moving on to question five, it says work out the estimate of the mean mass of the gerbil. So here we've got a table of a mean a mass of 50 gerbils and we want to work out the mean. So for this, what we need to do first is create a midpoint column and work out the midpoint between these numbers. And again, if you're not too sure how to work out the midpoint, just simply add the upper bound and the lower bound together and divide by two. So here we've got 52.5, 57.5, 62.5, 67.5, finally 72.5. From that, what we then want to do is create an FX column. And how do we calculate the FX value is basically multiply the frequency by the midpoint in which you should have 157.5517.511258108 and 580 giving you a total of 3190. Now I know that the total frequency is 50 so the estimated mean is going to be sigma of the sum of fx which is 3190 all divided by 50 which gives us an answer of 63.8, which seems a bit reasonable because obviously 60 to 65 is our most popular group. So you would expect your average mean to be roughly around there. So here, just writing 63.8 would be absolutely fine. The next question, which is very popular when it comes to uh, these types of group data for, uh, val um, questions, it says, what assumption have you made in calculating the mean maths? So something along the lines that all data in each group is equal to the midpoint. So something along those lines would be absolutely fine to get more marks and just make sure I'm writing equals correctly. Uh, so something along the lines of the fact that we've assumed that all the values in the midpoint, um, we've used rounded data in terms of we don't know the exact data uh, for this. But again, just make sure you understand the question. It's not a case of saying, why have you used the estimated mean? It's more of a case of what assumptions have you made in calculating the mean mass. Moving on to question six, it says Trevor stood by the turnstile uh, of, at a football ground. It says he counted the number of males and females that passed through one minute and the table shows the results. In total, 43,697 people attended the match, so less likely to be the Etihad. And the question says, estimate the number of women that attended the match. Now for this, what we need to do first is work out how many people pass through the turnstile. So that's going to be 170. And then we need to work out the proportion. So it's going to be 22 out of 170. So that there is the proportion of females and then we need to multiply that by the total so four three six nine seven and what do we get as an answer so on the calculator gives us five thousand six hundred and fifty four what do what's the left number I'm doing there point nine oh five eight eight two 
and then we just want to round that number up till we get uh, five, not four, so six, five, six. But uh, five, six, five, six, five, five. What am I talking about? There we go. And then moving on to 6b it says what assumption have you made in your estimate so something along the lines of that the sample is representative of the population and so basically in terms of that the same number of women same number of men uh, within that care attended in the minute sort of arrive at the next following minutes of when Trevor is uh, recording his data so something along the lines that would be absolutely fine we then move on to our last question which is looks at community frequency so the community frequency graph shows the time taken by 100 university students to solve a maths puzzle and the question says work out the mean time now for this you are going to need a ruler or a straight edge and so here we've got 100 so always make sure that you're checking what is the total amount so in this case it's 100 and what you then need to do is to draw a horizontal line at the midpoint until it hits the curve and then once it does you then want to draw a line a vertical line going downwards and then just recording what number that falls between and I'd say that's probably about 38 now looking at the mark scheme they would accept any answer between 37 and 39 so looking at question 7b it says work out the interquartile range so for this my lower quartile as there's the total of 100 my lower quartile is going to be at 25 and my upper quartile is going to be at 75 so find 20, uh, 25 and what I'm going to do is let's get a different color ink and we're just going to draw a horizontal line until it hits the curve and then project downwards my lower quartile is 30 and if I do the same for 75, about there, again, you'd definitely be using a ruler. And then as soon as it hits the curve, you then want to project downwards. And I make it out to be about 46. And then we just need to, for the IQR, just take away those two numbers. So 46, take away 30 gives me an answer of 16. Now looking at the mark scheme, they'd accept any answer between 15 and 17 for the IQR. Now moving on to 7C, it says 100 high school students were asked to solve the same puzzle. The table shows their results. And what we want to do is we want to compare the results of university and high school students. Now whenever you are comparing two sets of data, so let me just write HS and let's write university and the median was 38 and the interquartile range was 16 so just so that I'm not scanning up and down now whenever you want to, whenever you are comparing the two sets of data you want to talk about two things the first thing you want to talk about is the average so on average and something along the, comparing the mean uh, the median values so university students were quicker than high school students and then how do you know um, as their median was lower and that would be fine for one mark and then for the second mark you would then want to talk about the spread so here you're comparing the interquartile range so here you could say something along the lines of that the high school students were more consistent in their times as their interquartile range value was smaller. So something along the lines, obviously your wording could be slightly different, but as long as it kind of, one statement compares the average, one statement compares the spread or the interquartile range, and that is absolutely fine to get your marks for that. And that concludes the end of this test on statistical measures.